back with another episode of Explicit Content. Today I'm with my home good friend Xavier. How you feeling, bro? What's happening, man? Doing pretty good today. Doing good. Yeah, we you feel yeah, me? Quarantine ended, right? Yeah, yeah. quarantine and yeah. all type of other shit, man. It's it's been a funny couple months. <laughs> How twenty twenty been treating you? Uh, twenty twenty been an up and down year, like any other year. I mean, what can I say? Hmm. This year started off like. Regular like any other year, I guess you could say. Everybody had, like, hopes of, like, a lot of good things. And I can't complain, though, to be honest, man. I graduated this year. and What did you graduate? Graduated uh, some, what is it, cum laude, some shit okay. like that. I think that's what it is, yeah, cum laude. I'm yeah, just glad that. I'm saying, what's your major, man? Oh, sociology. Okay. Yeah, sociology major. That shit was cool, though. I ain't gonna lie. I learned a lot of shit during, like, just being in that major. Taught me a lot about myself. Taught me a lot about, like, my people, too. It really made me want to learn more about my people, though. I will say that. Like, it, being a sociology major taught me to, like, look at the world in a whole different scope than, like, what you used to. You feel me? Especially being in college and learning that. Like, I came in being a business major, wanting to be, like, this entrepreneur type of guy. Yeah, type of shit. Exactly. Exactly, and uh, I guess just being at Morehouse and seeing what they was talking about in those type of programs and in those in the business major and shit just wasn't hitting like how I expected it to, and I needed to find something that was like geared towards where my heart was at. You feel me? I had a conversation with my mom when I went home, and she told me like, "Why you after my freshman year?" She told me like, "When you in college, like don't look for something for like a job. Look for something that like help you like learn. You feel me? Because this is the time where like." your mind is at is is either gonna get to its its peak or you just gonna be acceptable to whatever people teach you at this point. So that's when I started looking at sociology like shit. This is something that's gonna help me like you can soak in too. Exactly. Something I can soak in, something that's gonna help me like ask questions instead of just be complacent with what's thrown in front of my face. And that's right now, you feel me, important to know what's being thrown in front of your face. Because we gotta we got a choice to say what we do and don't like, what we do and don't want. And that's the thing. A lot of this shit is being thrown in your face. Exactly. Like, and it's been like that for so long. And it's like, I think that's what's going on right now, like, with the riots and shit. Because my mom asked me, like, what's the deal with y'all generation? Like, you feel me? Like, why are y'all like this? On me. And it's like, nah, it's not just us. It's just like, I think we sick of this shit being in our face. On me. We like, for sure. this shit so long, like, in our face. And we even seeing it in our parents' face. And you feel me? Like, Man, for our generation, like, like we, we saw, I mean, at least for me, like, I can say, like, I saw, like, Say like the Rodney King beating early at a young age type shit. Like my sister was born April thirtieth, nineteen ninety one. So a year later, ninety two was when that trial happened on that bir- on my sister's first birthday. So like that's a story I hear about all the time type shit. So, so that means like your family. exactly like it, it's a re- and it happened in L A. Like the riot started yeah. right in L A. Like I just yeah. recently watched the L A. ninety two uh, documentary on Netflix and I'm just like I ain't gonna lie, shit hit home, bro. Like I'm feeling it in my body, like damn, this is what my mom was talking about. And I'm seeing the visual representation, like my sister's first birthday, and she had to get out of her home because they burning shit up in that life. But it's a reason why they burning it up. Fuck them businesses. Like, it's about yeah. it's about us. And, and and as we see, it's the same thing still happening. You feel me? And we all want change type shit. Like, we all want a difference to happen. But it's like, what are we willing to sacrifice for that? You willing to go get that shit? Exactly. Are you willing to go get it? Are you willing to sacrifice your business right now? Like, it's not about that. It's not about the money. It's about what's right. You feel me? Do the right thing. I always try and live by that little quote right there. It's like, do the right thing. Whatever is right, that should be your first intention. And I feel like people aren't taught that no more. People, parents, or they're just themselves. They don't put that first. Like, the right thing is what you should be looking at doing all the time because... You wouldn't want that done to you at the end of the day. Nobody would want to be treated poorly. So if you do the right thing, you treat people like how you want to be treated, it's like... Some go to rule type. Exactly. Nothing but good can come back to you. That's basic everyday shit that you're all supposed to learn in first grade. Man, bro. bro. But it's crazy. It's crazy, bro. Now, I think about it like some people just don't have those basic, like, instincts, I guess you could say, to just do the right thing. And it's... Hey man. But shit, yeah, I mean, yeah. On a lighter note, um, I know you say you watched the Rodney King yeah. on Netflix and then <laughs> do the right thing. Have you got a chance to check out Spike Lee's movie? The nah, yet or no? Not yet. I mean, just came out mm-hmm. today. Spike Lee fan. Big, huge Spike Lee fan. Changed my life, like, for sure. I remember being a kid, like, seeing the uh, 
school days, VHS in my house. My so, mom, my family, like, big movie watchers. So it was kind of opposite. Not, I, I wouldn't say opposite. I always knew who Spike Lee was, but I remember in high school, um, like, my kind of community kind of canceled him because of the Chirac movie and okay. shit. Um, Makes but sense. I had knew who he was, you feel me? And, um, you feel me? Like I said, I remember watching Malcolm X like that. But I remember right before, like, I wasn't, like, you feel me, on Spike Lee like that, but right before I went to college, my mom told me, like, watch school day. Mm-hmm. And then, like, when I got some more house, shit made sense. And then, you feel yeah. me, I came here, shit made more sense. And yeah. then I was like, okay, I fuck with this nigga again. Yeah. You feel like, me? I, I definitely feel you on that, bro. Like, I, I saw the movie, like I said, young age. So, like, it kind of... It didn't have an impact on me right away, I guess you'll say. But, like, when you see those type of things as a kid, you remember them. Like, I didn't even really have to know what the movie was about. I remember just seeing the cover and knowing, like, it's six black people on the cover of this movie. That's pretty That's pretty cool. Because the other movies in my house, most of them had all white lead act roles. You feel me? Because that's all that was going through Hollywood and movies during that time. But for me to see that... And then, like, just having, like I said, asking questions. Like, i kind of always been a, a kid to be, like, want to know more. Like, my mom wasn't, she always told me she wasn't like that. That she was, she she didn't ask as many questions as a kid. But that's just how it was during that time. Like, you wasn't you were taught to ask questions. You was taught to obey what was told to you. You feel me? Nah, so, like, shit. with me, my mom always told me, like, ask as many questions as possible. Like, I'm not a, I'm I'm not a talker. Way type exactly. And not in the most in the disrespectful far. way. Like, and I'm not the most talkative person. Like, I, I'm... A lot of people say, like, I sit in the room and I'm pretty quiet unless you really know me, but... That's the thing, you gotta sit back and the niggas who sit back be sucking that shit up. Exactly. Like, I soak up a lot of stuff. Like, I, I always tell myself, and one thing that I... I even put subtly, like, on my little social media is that, like, I'm a student always. Like, in my bio, it just will say, like, student. You feel me? Like, I, I want to get to the role of a teacher, but I don't have enough knowledge yet. I don't have enough, like, wisdom yet. I haven't lived enough to... I feel like soak it in yet. And, and it's not really an age thing. It's just that I didn't start paying attention until I got to Morehouse type. You feel me? Like when I was back younger. That's yeah. like Ninja Turtles or Master Splinter type shit. Yeah. You feel me? Like the Literally. still in the field, but you feel me? They still got that. Like I graduated and everything, but bro, I'm. I'm it, take a, it take a real nigga to understand that though. You feel me? Man, I'm telling you, bro. I've learned more. Not more, but I've learned just about as much from just being curious than just being in school. Like, I look back when I was at home, I look back at, like, my K, kindergarten through 12th grade experience, which is a lot. You feel me? That's a lot of school years. But I looked at it like I wasn't fed a lot of bullshit because I was in certain areas for school. Like, I never went to school in, like, a white area like that. Like, I was around black people pretty much my whole life. So, like, the stuff they were teaching, like, we learned about certain black figures and certain people I guess you should know about, but it didn't go fully in depth with more people that I feel like it's just that are just as important as the Malcolm X's and Martin Luther King's, you feel me? But once I got here, it wasn't necessarily me having to like somebody tell me to look at it. It was more so me just being, once again, curious, just wanting to know, you feel me? You being on a campus like this at Morehouse, it's like you want to know more. Yeah, exactly. You want to know more. You hear people talking about these different stories. You walk out, you see a King statue every Tuesday and Thursday freshman year it's like why wouldn't I want to know more about this so it's like I'm always going to look at myself as a student because it's so much going on in the world so much to pass around it's like shit don't ever be closed minded on some knowledge that somebody trying to pass around to you because you never know what you may learn from them and I feel like nah I feel like but I see a lot of people just blocking off a lot of knowledge just content with what's being told to them you feel me this is what's said so I'm going to go with it well why you feel me Nah, that's real shit. So I mean, uh, you say you you, you was a curious uh, child and, and for sure still am. Yeah, no, nah, I was like kind of kind of the same. Um, and I remind me a lot about my childhood. And I remember people used to always tell me like, "All right, but curiosity kills the cat." Mm-hmm. What? How would you say that that phrase? Um, you can apply that to your curiosity. Uh, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to to kill it. But yeah, you know what I'm like, definitely not be, trying to kill it. But mindful? I just feel like, like I said, like I'm, I'm quiet until until I feel like it's a time to be to speak. You feel me? Like I, I feel like I just know how to. I hate this these new terms like read the room or you feel me shit like nah, that. Yeah. But it's like but I'm, that's, I know that's how saying, I know right? how to like it's just something that I guess was taught to me. It's like an instinct of me just being able to be like if I don't know what to say, then I'm gonna sit back. I'm gonna try and learn some knowledge on what is being talked about. And then I'm then going to ask questions, then going to put my two cents in. But it's like, 
people don't do that. People just go full fledged on this is what I believe, this is what has to be done. And it's like, well, you have to be mindful of the people that's going through the shit. You have to be mindful of just like everything. Because we live in this world where it's a hundred times more sensitive. You got to be mindful of a lot of shit you say. So it's like, sensitive ass world. Yeah, it's like, I'm not trying to kill the cat. I'm not trying to ask me questions and just like, oh man, this nigga's a lot. But it's like, the question I do ask or the you feel me? The statements I have, I want them to stand on their own two feet. They got to be powerful enough to be like, okay, I, this person, they remembered it. And that's how I feel like I, I definitely like, that's one of my strengths. I feel like I, I learned that here at Morehouse. Like, ask the questions that you can, that you want the answers to. Like, just don't beat around the bush with it. Be straight up about what you want to know. That's real right there. Like, be straight up. So, so I mean, um, a lot of people who probably will watch this or, you feel me, viewers, Four years ago, you feel me, I never would expect to, you feel me, sit down and interview you or talk no to you. Cap. That's cap. That's <laughs> oh, God. Especially on camera or some shit like this. On me. So, um, take me, like, you feel me, let's, let's kind of, like, transition three, four years, like, freshman year, sophomore year. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Um, when did you start taking pictures? I know that's kind of a big part of who you are now. Or so, the whole life. photography thing, it's funny you ask that. So, that started my, like, about, mm, the... I wouldn't even say the end of my freshman year. That probably that started around the second semester, sophomore year. Okay. So around that time, like I remember my homie Braxton. Wait, so freshman year you just on constant and shit like I, I wasn't even on constant, bro. I was just I, I could have bro. I, I'm telling you, man. I was I just a nigga on campus shit. wearing clothes. Okay. Like you feel me? Like I was just me and you the same. Like yeah, you just, was just a business major. Just a business major. A nigga putting on some fly clothes. And people notice you type shit. Like, right. that's just kind of how it went. And then I never really looked at more else. Like, I tried to do the whole Casa thing. Didn't work out. But then I never really looked at more else. Like, I'm trying to, like, be a part of something here. You feel me? Like, I wasn't necessarily ever trying to fit in. I've never been, like, a fit in type of person. It's like, I'm not trying to be cocky or anything. But, like, I, my crowd comes to me. Type. Especially, like, because I played basketball my whole life. So, I never had to really go out and fish for attention it was like the shit was just in my face and when I got here it was like I knew for sure I wasn't about to come here and like change up like be on some oh I gotta be this certain type of nigga now cause I'm going to a HBC like it was just like I'm the same guy I'm just like I said I'm gonna be respectful of where I'm at but I'm gonna wanna know more about where I'm at at the same mm-hmm. time but like as time went on I started to wanna like just do something here in Atlanta. Like, I didn't know what, what I'd do. I just finished, like I said, playing basketball. I wasn't a rapper. Wasn't a rapper. Wasn't nothing. Like, I didn't really know what, you feel me, I could do. So, my homie Braxton, he was the one. He came to more. I was a film major, man behind the camera. And just naturally, when you be around your friends, you feel me, you start to pick up on different things that they right. like. Right. So, he was the one that just kind of kept putting the camera in my face. And I... I, like I said, I, I put on good clothes. I like putting on good clothes, but i am never been a photogenic guy. So I would hate, like, posing for pictures. So I started taking eight pictures. And then next thing I know, I went home. I got a little disposable, took some photos on it. And I was like, okay, it's cool. Bought a camera. and You said disposable, you mean like the little Walmart mm-hmm. joint? Little, wa- little Walmart joint, little disposable camera. And shit, man, it's been... Any reason why you picked that one to start with, or? Cause I didn't know if I liked it or not. I didn't want to. I'm a. I'm a cheap guy. Like I'm not gonna lie. So <laughs> that's one thing about so me. Like being invest around me, I'm not gonna invest my money into something I'm not fully invested into. So once I knew that this is something that could take my mind away from whatever else is going on in the world, that this is what I'm gonna do now. And once I knew that, I was like, okay. I'm gonna get a camera. So I bought a little camera, and then it broke. And that's this has just been the process now. Like. Buying little cameras and then they break and it's just like fuck. I gotta figure Three out what's cameras next. Have you bought so far? Shit, man. I'm on like, I went through like four or five different cameras, and how much did you cost? Like thirty, forty bucks maybe. The most I spent was like one twenty. I had that one for like a year, but they usually break every like four months, five months, and it's just like random. Like I don't you know. Can't fix them. It's just some. Gear yeah, and it's like it, even if I could fix it, it's just not worth it because the cameras are so cheap. But now, yeah. now I'm like, I'm so invested in what I'm doing with this photography stuff, and like I really love what I'm doing and where I'm going with it. And I don't really have to. I'm not looking at other people to like it. You feel me? Like me doing this is just my expression on the world. Me 
it's like my po it's like me writing poetry or me writing or me playing jazz to the world. Art. This is my form of art. This is my form of freedom right now. You feel me? Like I feel like when I'm doing this, nobody can tell me anything. People look at me with my camera. I'm taking pictures of random people on the street. They just looking at me. Sometimes they not even noticing me. But it's just like and that's, that's my it's, escape. It's how you develop things. Right? Yeah, I mean, I look at a lot of uh, photographers that came before me, and I like see who? the style like. Um, Gary Winogrand, I look at a lot. Harry Benson, um, Mark Cohen. Um, I look at a lot of older really photographers, like a lot of artists. yeah, man. Like I studied it on my own time, and that's one thing. Like I definitely want to say during this, like talk we have, because people ask me like, what do you do? Like, how do you get these photos? Or like, can you give me some tips? And the only tip I can give you is just. Be willing to do the research yourself. I'm not a photography major. Nobody in my family does this. Like I said, the only person that ever did this was like my homie Braxton. So like we learn together. Like I sit on my couch, he's my roommate. So we sit on the couch and watch different shit on YouTube. I look these people up that I named plus more and you find a whole different world of YouTube. You feel me? So I use the tools that are in front of you. I go to Barnes and Nobles. I may not buy the book, but I'm gonna read it while I'm there, and eventually I'll get on Amazon or whatever, and you feel me? I'll purchase it. I got an Amazon book list right now of like three thousand dollars of just like art books, photography books, painting books. You feel me? But it's like that's what I want to know about. Yeah. It goes back to just what do you want to know? You feel me? Ask the questions that you want to know, and if somebody won't answer for them, answer them for yourself. We live in a world where your phone is your most powerful tool, so put it to work. Shit, get off of Twitter and Instagram and. Look something up on Safari shit. <laughs> shit that shit right there. Like, it's right there. All time. Like, even before a smartphone, you got the computer in the mm-hmm. it's, it's right there. It's I'm right like, there. Look it up. Look it up. But nah, that shit's really in your hands. Like, my brother, my brother Kendall, he went home because of this COVID shit. He went to Morehouse. Go to Morehouse. Went home because of this COVID shit. And he been trying to get some pants tailored when he was down here. Nobody would teach him. We got a sewing machine at the crib. You want to know what he did? Got on YouTube and taught himself. Now he in the house sewing pants together. I got my homies checking him out who got clothing brands in LA. Now they looking at him like, oh, I need you to help me make some samples or come with me to this fabric shop. Let's get you from me. And it's all about what do you want to know? What do you want to do? If you really invested in it, take the time to research it and really teach yourself about it. You feel me? It's only so, it's only so much that somebody can teach you. It's like, if you really want to know it, you'll grind enough to really go learn about it. That I mean, that's what I see. That. That's how I see the world shit. All right, that's respectable. So, um, like you said, your home is L.A., right? Mm-hmm. So growing up in L.A., Inglewood. Um, Inglewood, what are some of, like, the influences you had growing up out there? Like, it mm-hmm. come from music or, you feel me, the culture? Shit, man, it just came, it came from, like, being outside, bro. I came alive, being around my family. Like, those was my main influences. Like, my mom put me in a lot of different, like, programs that didn't shelter me. So I was in a lot of different areas and neighborhoods throughout L.A. as a young kid. So seeing, like, people on the east side of L.A. and they lowriders and shit like that. Or even, like, seeing the ghetto. You feel me? Like, I guess you could say, like, seeing all those stuff gave me my influence like I didn't just see the good side of LA I saw every side of it so I guess my family the environment I was in like all those type of things I mean I was raised I guess I mean I always tell my mom like I was raised the right way she put a lot of like good things in front of me that made me like appreciative especially when I got older because I recognized with them when I got older so I for sure would just say like my mom is probably like my biggest huge influence for sure my family for sure, but like my mom, cause she gave me the whole swag, for sure. So who was some of your favorite artists growing up? Growing up, yes, uh, uh, yes, yeah, you say your mom like, what's some shit like up, your mom put you on that you still fuck with? Oh, my mom put me on to like, cause Erica I know it's, Badu, it's a lot of my mom's I still like, fuck with. Yeah, for sure. My mom put me on to a lot of Erica Badu, a lot of Mary J. Blige. Uh, she put me on to like. Surprising Tupac, Biggie, Ice Cube, those three like her favorite rappers. Yeah, my mom, she went real big on Tupac with Biggie and Cube for sure. For mm-hmm. sure. Uh, a little bit of sleep. I remember seeing, this is funny, I remember like, because my mom had a, 
a CD rack. Like as when I was a kid, it was like full of CDs. Same with like our VHS and DVD one. And then the CD rack, like I distinctly remember this Miles Davis album called uh, what is it? it might be Voodoo. Uh, no, not Voodoo. That's that's D'Angelo. Hold on. This is it might be the it's the two two album. This is the album cover. Huh? Scared the fuck out of me. Scared me. And I just like as a kid seeing that, I would be like, damn, that shit is crazy. And then I would go and see like in my aunt's collection, like uh Michael Jackson's fucking uh what's the one with the all over print and it has like his eyes. Oh, um you talking about the carnival joint. The carnival one. Uh Man, I'm telling you, and see, just seeing those, I didn't even have to hear the no, music. Yeah. Seeing those so images the, the, the album would, would be baby. like, wow. And so when I would get older, I would like, really when I would start being around my dad a lot more, he was a music guy. He would guitar, yeah, my dad reads drums, me, so. all that, drawing. Like, I have a tattoo that my dad drew on my arm, like, freehand. You <laughs> feel me? So, like, my dad is the artistic one. For sure, my mom as well, but my dad is like full. Nice blown with it or was full blown with it so he like whenever I would go to his house it was a lot of music being played a lot of jazz a lot of rock and roll a lot of just talk on just like the different arts you feel me and I feel like that's when I started to really pick up more on like just that side of myself opposed to just being about all sports being all basketball because at first it was just like I'm going to the fucking NBA I'm about to fucking play against LeBron what Nobody age was that though like Two, I started, well, I've been, I mean, my dad lived around the corner from me, so it's not like I didn't see my dad, but, like, right. once I started to really pay attention more, I guess you could say around, like, seventh, eighth grade. That's early still, though. Yeah, it's still early. It's I like, mean, I ain't learned until, like, 11. Bro, <laughs> like, like seven, seventh, eighth grade, start being, like, more attentive to what my dad was saying. No, nah, And sure. I guess it was dealing with just, like, that was God's, like, time and telling me, like, start paying attention now. Because, like, I lost my dad my sophomore year, going into my sophomore year of college. So I didn't have a lot of time to really grasp as much knowledge as I really wanted to, especially because around my sophomore year of college, I started to act more like my dad, do a lot more things that my dad would do. So like those phone calls I would need, like out the roof, it's like, damn, who do I, you feel me, you talk to next, you feel me? Me? So I guess just like that side of me, I would, it, it was crazy growing up because I had those two sides. Like I would be able to like be with my dad around one corner and go to my mom's and be a whole different lifestyle you feel me be around my dad he's sitting around me drinking beers and smoking or whatever i'm seeing that side the more artistic side i go around my mom and it's more of a distant side it's more of a you feel me you got to do this you got to do that and then i mesh them together and now i got my own program type you feel me it's like i know what i want shit kind of crazy no. when i be thinking about it because i think about it a lot sure. no for sure and then that's just that goes in there well when you think about shit like that, then I usually get too deep into it. Oh, yeah, so for sure. I just tell myself, like, yeah, shit happened for a reason. Yeah, you know? oh, God, yeah, for sure. Bro, I always, like, I always oh, yeah. think about it, and I always have to tell myself, like, it was a reason for it happening. There were certain moments I remember vividly because that moment happened for that reason. You feel me? So and, I, it's like, and it's just like, like I said, that shit just applies to so much. Yeah. Like, like I, I tell myself that maybe, like, two or three times a day. Like, yeah, for sure. This just happened for a reason. It's or life. It's like, that just happened for you. You're not, you're not the only one going through shit. And that's just how it is. Like from the smallest to the biggest shit. Uh-huh. Man, I'm telling you, man, people this is I hope people watch this and really just like listen to certain things. Cause this is a lot of shit that like not only do I think to myself, but like I'll talk to like my close friend group about this type of stuff. Like this what I'm saying is nothing new, you feel me, to the people I'm around. Like if they watch this, when they watch this, like they're gonna hear this and be like, Yeah, this is exactly. this is regular Xavier talk, you feel me? But it's like, I want people to watch this and really understand, like, not me, but understand, like, well, yes, understand me, but understand, like, this, I feel like is the right, not, not, I'm not trying to be subjective and be like, this is the right way to live, but like, I'm doing something right. So just like, you know, shit, do the right thing. But look, before we wrap up, we got to go on the book. Yes, sir. It's like the, uh, today in rap history book. Hip hop and rap, rap and hip hop history. Um, For sure. I'm gonna go with June 12th. So, uh, Plies released his debut single, Shoddy, on Atlantic <laughs> Station. Oops, not Atlantic, on Atlantic Records. Plies, man. Um, yeah, how you feel about that? You remember when that song came? I remember 
uh, T Pain was on the feature. That's when T Pain was going stupid with yeah. the features. Do I remember that yeah. song? How could I not remember it? T Pain was featured on everything at that time. T Pain and Plaz was running shit. This well, Plaz really, because really, I remember one. I mean, it's a little off track about that song, but I remember Plaz had a song that went so crazy in LA called uh, Becky. Can yeah. Miss Becky, Everybody please, man, Becky. bro, you put that damn song on at a party. Come on, bro. It's going up. Right. Doing Everybody numbers. Becky. And then also, same year, uh, Fabulous, he releases From Nothing to Something. Uh, Doesn't Storm the Label. Yep, yeah, I definitely I remember, remember that shit too. Remember that it as went, well. It went uh, number two on Billboard. You feel me? It had, what's the show? It Make Me Better mm-hmm. with Neo. That's Neo, yeah. And, and him, let's not forget about Neo's legacy. That yeah. nigga was on. No, it, that's, that's what I'm saying, 2000. Them people, and it's crazy, bro, because didn't Neo do a song with Plies as well that was like, Big, it was fucking uh, Neo and Plies, bro. They got a song that was like big, big, bro. What's the name of that shit? Bust it, baby. Bust it, bro. There it go. I'm telling you, hey. bust it, <laughs> baby. Shout yes, bro. Baby. There we go. It, Come on, it, man. I'm telling you, them the niggas, was, nigga, them niggas you. was running shit, bro. During that time, that was a crazy, bro. Childhood was crazy, bust bro. It, them, baby. That was the days of big white tees, jean shorts, and Air Force One mids with fucking ankle socks on. And that you can check my stat check about that. All right. Last thing, we got these questions too. Mm-hmm. So first one I've ripped, light skin and dark skin. You talking about women? Shit, both. Okay. I like all women. I don't discriminate. Real, real nigga. All right, all, right, all black women. Yeah, I'll put it at like that. Mets or Yankees? I know you from the West Coast. The bro. Dodgers. <laughs> even I know you from the West Coast. All right, all right. Wigs or so ins? Shit. Anything. Whatever you feel comfortable in. Whatever the woman feel comfortable in, man. I'm saying I'm. Hey man, I'm not trying to tell her how to live her life. That's real. Cause shit. I don't want no, I don't want yeah, no woman that. telling me how to how to live mine. That's real shit. Yeah, well, I ain't gonna lie. A lot of these questions I already know not to ask you. Adidas or Nike? Come on, man. Yeah. Nike boys. Ahead, I wish man. I had some Nikes tell on right now. <laughs> I wish I had some Nikes on right now. I've been rocking the burger socks for like four bucks. Nah, no, all quarantine, I definitely caught my first pair of breakfast socks for quarantine. I'm telling you, these motherfuckers is the real deal, man. You go out the house, it's like slippers. I got no socks on today, man. Really doing it. You fuck with flats or drums, man? Oh, okay. Now, this one I got a pain on. I fuck with drums. If you eat flats, you're crazy. Oh, God. You're good. really crazy. That's all I'm going to leave it at. <laughs> Dave, Issa G. Herbo. I don't listen to either one of them. Dom Kennedy. J. Cole or Kendrick? Mm. Kendrick LeVar, for sure. I fuck with J. Cole, he cool, but Kendrick is on a different level, of just different level. Power and fire. I don't watch either one of them, man. I watch cartoons, shit. Rick and Morty, Bob's Burger, all that regular show, all that good stuff. <laughs> all right, Floyd the Titan. Oh, Mike, come on, man. Me and the homies was just talking about this when I was in L.A. I'm, I'm for sure taking Mike. That nigga, Floyd, now Floyd is a fast motherfucker, but Mike was fast and powerful. That, yeah, that them two together? You think he coming back? Shit, I don't know. I've been seeing reports about it. He, he, he got that little twin yeah, shit. He, I know. He looking strong as fuck. Strong as fast in the motherfucker, too. Like, how the hell you just old still whacking niggas like that? All right, Whew. All right last few. The baby. Or the, or the baby or the baby uh, I don't really like either one of those <laughs> Lil Baby cool I fuck with Lil Baby he, I'll take Lil Baby really gutter gutter's better than both of them bigger alright uh, Biggie or Pop oh man both of them man fuck both of them I can't man I'm telling you bro know, look, last one, that man. right there is a this, hard question this, this one gonna determine some real shit though Mike or Prince Mike Jackson or Prince see I listened to both of them that I was raised on Prince by my mom. Okay. And my aunt loved Michael Jackson. This is my mom's oh, sister. So, Gary, so, so bro, I'm mom. like, I, okay, I know more it's Michael Jackson Gary songs. I know right. more Michael Jackson songs. But with Prince was like, bro, it, I don't know. That nigga was different, bro. And I like that different shit. Like, shit like that is like, that's the type of shit I'm going to go towards. So, like, no, I'm in the middle, bro. Like, that's a... I, I'll go. I'll Mike, go. Mike, Mike had a whole whole little Neverland though. You know? Mike get down was crazy, bro. Like 
Michael Jackson whole little. <laughs> All right, man. That's another episode of Explicit Content. Thank you, my boy, for yes, checking in with me today. Go ahead, drop your social. Tell me to check you out at. Uh, my social media handles is at xvrntn. That's it. Instagram and Twitter. All right, that's it. Thank y'all.